Aaron with uh, Matthew Stafford in concussion protocol and not nothing definitive on whether he's going to play or not. Um, if he doesn't play, does that put more pressure on you guys as a defense? Um, obviously, we would love to have him out there, but you, you, you trust the guys that are behind him that they're going to go out there and do what they need to do to you know help us win the game. So it's about trusting the next guy up. You know that's that's a part of this business. It happens. So. Um, would, would, would I like to see him out there? Yes, but if 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 it's the case he don't play, then I trust that you know the guys behind him is going to step up and make plays for us. So, have you ever suffered a concussion playing professionally? Mm -mm. No, never. No, and never. I mean, have you ever had any that, that you thought were close? Mm -mm. I mean, were you no, no, nope, never. So, mm -hmm. been blessed. Guys who are pretty vocal about um, wanting more from that side of the ball within the locker room, how do you guys create space for those those voices to be heard while also keeping everyone connected? Well, as a competitor, nobody like to lose. Um, after after a while, you get kind of fed up with it, and sometimes things need to be said. Guys need to hear certain things. Um, so um, I don't think it's nothing personal. I just think it's trying to motivate everybody to get on the same page of trying to win games. Like I said, we got a lot of football left. Um, we still win it. You know, we ain't out of it. So um, everybody got that mindset, man, that, you know, we could still got opportunity to, to to get to where we're trying to get to. Um, obviously, we got to get better. We got to play better as a team. Um, so um, we just got to keep working. And, and guys that just feel like they're not doing enough, do more. And guys that's doing enough, um, keep working and let's do more. You know, so that's, that's what it come down to, just trying to do everything we can to, um, you know, be successful because obviously, you know, my main purpose of playing football is to win. And, you know, I'm going to do everything in my power to, you know, motivate the guys around me, trying to motivate myself to, to continue to do that because, like I said, we're still alive. So. You think what, the, what Jalen said um, represented kind of what other guys on defense might be feeling but didn't want to say? Honestly, I really – I heard he said something, but I, I don't know exactly what he said. But um, I'm, I'm, I don't know what he said, but I'm pretty sure – I don't. I don't think he went about it in a, in, a, in a wrong way. He just, after a tough loss, you know, there's, there's a lot on your mind. Sometimes you need to get stuff off your chest. So, you appreciate that from Jalen to be straightforward and just keep it real. That's just who Jalen is. You know, he ain't gonna hold back. You know, I, I think um, he, he's in the right mindset to say certain things. I don't think he mean it in a in a way they're trying to pull the team apart. If anything, he's trying to bring guys together. So, um, I, exactly. I don't know what he said, but me just knowing who Jalen is as a person. Um, I'm pretty sure he, he meant the he he just said something that was on his chest that you know he tried to put out there to you know we got to try to find a way to win. So kind of drawing uh, less attention than what Jalen said, um, Brian Allen actually mirrored a lot of the comments that he said about needing guys to to step up, especially on his side of the ball. And and um, I guess you know I've asked a lot of people like how they would describe Brian Allen's personality. <laughs> Uh, how would you describe his personality, and does it surprise you that he's the, he's the one in there echoing those comments as well? Oh, well, he's a cool guy, um, <laughs> funny guy. You know, that's usually not what he do, but like I said, after a while, guys kind of get fed up with the same old stuff. You know, you, you lose, you lose again, you lose again. It's not You can't keep saying the same stuff after a while. It's trying to, uh, now we got to really trying to find it, what's going on and trying to, you know, be better as a team or whatever the case may be, so... Um, that's just guys wanting to, you know, win. A lot of guys are saying. A lot of guys are saying there's a lot of time left. Do you feel a sense of urgency though at three and five? For sure. I, we ain't got too much more room to keep losing now. You know, now we, we, it's trying to find a way to trying to go on a win. I mean, I run and and go week to week and just keep trying to stack up some wins. But you know, at the end of the day, um, it's a tough lead. But I, I believe that we got the coaches and the players in this in this organization to get it done. We just got to, you know, get back in the groove of things and trying to find ways to um, be consistent and, and trying to find ways to win. So You've seen a lot of John Walford over the last few years in practices and, and that live scout team stuff. Um, is he still the guy a couple years ago when he had to come in when, when Jared was injured, you guys were fired up about it because of the way he prepares. Is he still that guy? Has anything changed about him? He's still that guy. Still guy that's always working. Um, always see him in the weight room doing things. Always um, on the field doing things, paying attention, understanding what he need to do. So that's, that's when we talk about 
um, next guy up and, and you trusting that the next guy gonna get it done. You know, obviously you would like um, one of your leaders out there to be out there playing, but um, if it comes to a situation where he can go, um, obviously you're gonna trust the guy that's behind him that's gonna get it done, so. Afternoon, guys. We lost. You know, um, it's no easy way to put those things. There's no, uh, it's no real uh, thing to put behind it. We just got to do more. We got to finish that game. You know, we played really well until 44 seconds left in the game, and you got to find a way to make it better for those last 44 seconds. And um, you just got to be honest with the guys, and like we got to be honest with each other. You know, we had uh, bad plays, bad calls, bad everything, and in, in, in those moments, so we got to make those things work. And like, um, you go back to work the next day, like Kobe said about doubt. Can't doubt yourself. Go back to work and get it done. Get ready to go to work. When we've seen, you guys are too nice today. We've seen uh, Darian Kendrick on the field a lot more in the last several games. What's he done to? Uh, he's been outstanding. First of all, let's talk about being a rookie and then being thrusted into that role um, when he went out there. You know, Troy went down, D'Lo went down. Um, those guys came back. They had more limited roles, um, eased them back into it a little bit. D'Lo last week playing dime. Uh, Troy came back in last week, assumed the base. Um, this week, we can get a little bit more D'Lo, a little bit more Troy, a little bit more Jalen, get back to how we were to start the season. Um, still possibly a little bit of DK, but, um, you know, for a rookie being thrusted out there in those situations versus Tom Brady, you got to give a guy a lot of credit. You know, he got two, you know, judgment calls last week against them in those, in those pass interferences, um, which you can argue either way. Obviously, you guys see how I argued on the field. Um, and uh, we lost that battle. And uh, that last one had a nice double team. Tom made a nice play throwing to the second window. You get forced to the next window, try to make a play. To lose that football game is tough. And that's tough on anybody, not just a rookie, but – uh, particularly being a rookie in those situations is a lot. And I give him nothing but credit, um, how he handled himself, his composure, um, his mental toughness, um, his ability to stay connected with his team, and his guys having his back. You know, I, I, don't, I don't think it's one person that turned their back on him for giving up a game winning touchdown because um, that's what's happened. You know, that's the reality you got to do with as a corner. I talk about it all the time about gunfighters getting shot, and that's what we do in this business. All of us got shot the other day. That's all. That cannon went off and got us. Sure. Um, I don't know if like scramble drill is the right word to call it on the defensive side, but the way that Tom Brady was going tempo and yeah. the, the communication and all of that, especially with young players who are having to step up big. No question. He, uh, Jordan, he, I'm trying to think, it, I'm, I know what happened, so I'm not thinking about that, Jordan. I'm thinking about how to say this without making it sound like an excuse so anybody can give me any mental weakness quotes. He uh, did a nice job of taking over the game, being Tom Brady. Um, he, uh, got tempo going the last probably three drives of the game, and he was able to call his shots and call his plays. 
Um, I believe the first one we held them to the field goal, we blocked it. The next one we held them to a field goal, they made it. And the next one he's able to drive down and finish us off. Um, we got caught in that moment with him going against him in those moments. Um, a little bit, you know, too much, so to speak. Um, and eventually he got us. You know, we tricked him on a couple plays and had a couple missed opportunities uh, that we got to make. And he got those plays done. He got them done the right way. Um, he's outstanding, being Tom I'm talking about, and his ability to get that stuff done with his team. Um, our communication has to be better. Our, our execution has to be better, so to speak. Um, and I got to do a better job as a coach of, of getting those things done with those young players. So uh, there's no excuses. Uh, hats off to Tom, one of the greatest to ever do it. And uh, ready to go swing again. To that point, though, um, how do you keep guys mentally in it when it's clear if you give them enough chances and you have enough missed opportunities on the other side of the ball to close it out, um, you've got to go back on the field and ha you know, knowing that you're going to give Brady another chance to take a swing. We focus on our opportunities this week. You know, that's kind of what we did. You know, like I believe Terrell Lewis had a big time miss up on a pick six potentially, you know, on that screenplay. Uh, we got to make that play to make it easier for our offense. We had um, potentially one in a cover two uh, coverage that Troy Hill had an opportunity to get his hands on. We had one in the back of the end zone where Jalen had an opportunity to get his hands on. Uh, we got to take advantage of those ops. I don't believe you can focus on the other side of the ball when you're just trying to do your job at the highest level possible. And I believe those guys got to go out there and do that. And the same with me, it's coaching. Um, would I like to take back one of those calls or two of those calls? Sure. So, like, that will happen every single week you go into this thing. But put one foot in front of the other and keep stepping. And uh, time to do it, do it again this week. That's it. Jalen? Go ahead, sir. Yeah. Why you think that is, and what is it about the season that has kind of Well, Sean, as uh, <laughs> don't tell him I said, is he's, he's extremely spoiled, first of all. Um, out here in L.A., man, we've done a lot of winning. Um, I was able to be a part of that last year, and that was extremely fun. And we all got a Super Bowl from it and some big rings and things of that nature. And before that, um, they were able to go to a Super Bowl. They went to a lot of playoff games. They've been on a lot of run. This guy spent a lot of playoff money. Um, they've done such a great job. So... This being the first time and the first opportunity for real adversity, not November last year, but real adversity when you're behind the chains, behind the sticks, so to speak, uh, when it comes to win-loss record, um, some of the struggles that we've had as a team, as far as offense or whatever the case may be, some of the struggles we had just across the board with personnel, people, injuries, whatever the case may be, um, this is the most adversity he's had. I believe he asked Gary in his press conference the other day, does he think is the most? And it, it certainly is. Um, but it's great opportunity for you to get that coach speak out and to go act on those things, to show mental toughness, to show the will to fight back, to show all those things that we want to be, um, to show our attacking mentality, to show how we're not going to just lay down for anybody. And I think that's the greatest things that we have. Those moments and these moments as coaches, Sarah, are stuff that that's what they got us for. You know, like our job is to identify problems. Their job is to go fix them as players. And that's what we got to get done right now. You know, um, it's tough when you go through it for the first time, particularly being in the leadership role. You know, um, fortunately, I, I, unfortunately, or unfortunately, I wouldn't look at it. I didn't have to go through that, right? I had a high season, a low season, and it, it was it, right? Um, he's had a bunch of high seasons, and now we're going through something that's happening low. Um, but he still has the pin. And watching him right now lead his team, lead the offense, get these guys going, assume more role, assume more responsibility across the board, be accountable to his team, be accountable to his guys, his coaches, I think is all you can do. And I think that people respect that in this profession. And I think people respect that in this business. And I just think that's how we're going to go about our business. Um, after the game, Jalen was not angry, but pretty pointed about the fact that the defense shouldn't have been out there at the end. And sure. The offense needs to be able to close that kind of game out. What did um, you think of his comments? And, and do you think he was correct? You know, um, when Jalen speaks now, it comes from a different place. You know, um, I don't know young Jalen. Um, I didn't work with young Jalen. Um, young Jalen probably just spoke from uh, sheer uh, thoughts and feelings, how he felt at that moment. And right now, he's speaking in a good place. I think he's talking to his guys. I think he's supporting his guys. I think his, the way he shows that support sometimes is brutal honesty. And the way he's able to do those things is in our meetings, um, Far and few between with the media now. He gives them a little bit more things. Um, I watch his, his, his press conference every week. It's painful because he sits up here. He didn't want to give you guys emotion. It's, uh, it's Jalen Ramsey. But when he's with us, 
it's the emotion, it's the passion, it's his communication skills, his ability to talk to Sean, um, whether it be FaceTime or whether it be in person. Um, it's the directness with me. Like, I know the times I need to go see Jalen. I know which games, I know when after, I know when to go to his house, I know when to call him on Monday. Um, you know when you gotta talk to him, when he just has to vent to somebody. And I think the best part about Jalen is he's found ways to challenge and, and channel his energy to make it positive. And when he's asking his guys to step up at that moment, it's not a negative thing. He's not looking at it as a reflection of negatives. He's looking at something positive that he can get across to his guys for us to go out there and perform and find ways to win games. Is this one of those times where you had to go check on him and just see what's up? No, you know, um, I used to go hand slap everybody, but I always go check my guy, right? Jalen, um, you're talking about high energy. I went and checked on him in the, um, after the game. Um, I actually called them on Monday, like I always do anyway, but um, just to talk. Because sometimes you just got to get stuff out. You know, like uh, sometimes you need a couch in your office for everybody to come sit down. You know, like sometimes you guys might have to talk to me. Maybe this is my couch, talking to you guys. But, <laughs> but you just want to get those things out. You want people to get those feelings. You want to get that across. And um, the best part about Jalen right now is that he's comfortable coming to talk to me about everything and anything. Sure. true to the frustration there. So how do you go about um, just channeling that towards the offensive side and making sure everyone's on the same page and that you're moving in a positive direction? It's like a relationship, right? It, it accompanies brutal honesty. But you got to tell the right people. Right? I can't complain about uh, I can't complain about somebody and not complain to the right people. You got to know who to vent to. So it's his job to talk to our head coach, our offensive coordinator, all of those people, our offensive players, and he got to be able to speak to those guys. Because if you hold it in, you just hold back deep, dark feelings that's just going to carry over to something else later where it doesn't even matter, right? So get those things across. You have to say those things, speak. You know, Sean says best, clear, open communication, right? That's exactly what it is. Sometimes you're not always going to like what Jalen got to say, and say there is some truth to it like you just mentioned, but, you know, he, he's able to say it here because of our environment and the place that we've created for, for us. Do you feel that uh, with all the guys saying, hey, there's plenty of time still, still in control. Is there a sense of urgency, though, because you're three and five and can't, as Aaron just said, there's Kurt, less of a chance to lose? Kurt, I don't know if, um, I don't know if coaches always have a sense of urgency, you know, for our coaches. You know, it's like the, the National Football League is absolutely outstanding. We don't have 80 games, not to knock any other sports, but we got 17 guaranteed games, you know, guaranteed. And you want to win every single one of those things. And like, um, there's always going to be urgency for coach. So, like, when you ask a coach about urgency questions, it's kind of like, what? You know, like, it was urgent in preseason, <laughs> you know. But um, for us, in general, looking at the picture, it's definitely creates some urgency for us. It definitely creates some urgency for the team. Um, it, it, it locks you in a little bit more for those guys to be focused on what we need to do, you know. And, and fortunately, right now, we still got the pin, and uh, we got to go out there and write. When you see um, you got to prepare for their system. Um, Colt McCoy's his backup, very similar skill set. Obviously, Kyler's is extremely, you know, faster and explosive and all those things. But, you know, they'll do similar game plan things. They did it with him last year. Um, Colt stepped in there, I believe it was two or three games last year, did a really good job. Um, I know Colt well from Washington. Um, he's a very good backup. Um, they executed the game plans the same way when he was going out there. So um, hopefully you don't have to prepare for the 42-yard run that he can absolutely explode on if Colt goes out there. Hopefully it's more like a 10-yard run, and uh, you can go play those way. But don't tell Colt. You know, he'll be all pissed off I said that. But you go prepare for those things. Um, a little yes. more of a teaching question, if possible. Sure. Um, it looked like you guys opened up last week and using a little bit more Troy Hill and Jalen both underneath at the same time. <laughs> um, and I'm kind of wondering, what does that do to make a quarterback think twice about getting that quick game going that has kind of hampered you guys in the past? Jordan clearly watches too much tape. Um, so last week we had a, a, a dime roll, Jordan, and we were able to put Troy and both Jalen inside. Um, we did it a little bit versus San Fran to try to get those guys some of those playmaking positions, particularly the first time we did it versus Garoppolo to get those ball skill guys inside to make some plays on Garoppolo where the ball's going a lot. Um, this week we used a little bit um, in some of our third down situations and some of our pass down situations and got those guys more involved and try to get their hands on the ball and try to make those – plays that we're talking about, those turnovers that we keep asking for. Um, we just missed some of the opportunities, some of the playmaking opportunities that we had. And we got to make some of those. And 
those things come to life. I love using those two players because their skill set. Um, the things that they both can do are unique. Um, Troy being um, a little bit different than Jalen, obviously in size, but um, very ball savvy, um, very aware of what's going on in the football field at all times, and smart football players that you can get inside and make big time plays with. That was going to be my follow up, and thank you very much. Um, because Troy has sort of been doing that match stuff underneath, especially for a couple of years in the sure. system now, that level of trust, obviously you'd like him to hold on to the ball, that opportunity he did have. Um, but how much trust is there, especially getting him going and some of that stuff that uh, to mitigate the things that have been uh, a problem against you guys? I feel like i got to say this, too. I don't mean to blame those guys for missing the ball. Those are just things we got to make right now. You know, I want to clear that up. Like, those, those are the plays that we got to make because I know – Spin it. Raheem said we lost the game because Troy dropped the interception. No, like those are the ones you want to play, make to win games, right? And I absolutely enjoy Troy because of the knowledge and the football wealth that he brings to that room. Um, having him and Jalen with that unique background and that kind of a, those talents in there, I, I, just, I just love being able to play with those toys, so to speak, and to move those guys around interchangeable pieces, you know. And, you know, you got to move Taylor Rapp into that mix too. He does a little bit of that stuff and we move him inside as well at times. And to have the ability for offenses to have to prepare for all three of them, I think is special. Um, Raheem, if uh, Stafford does not play, sure. does that put more pressure on you guys as a defense? Let me see. Uh, take out the best quarterback that I've ever been a part of in my life, and does that make a difference? You know, I got a lot of confidence in, in Wofford. I do. I got a lot of confidence in our offense, and like that story is going to be written with our head coach, and we figure out what's wrong. But we're always going to be. Player safety driven first, and we're always going to worry about our guy. You know, Matthew is um, what it's all about for us. I mean, this thing's been built around him, but we got a lot of confidence in the guys that back everybody up on this football team, including him. So, but does that put any more pressure on you guys as a defense if he's not playing? You know, um, I put enough pressure on myself to worry about Matthew Stafford. You know, I want him to get healthy for him. So, like, we want to go out here and win this football game by any means necessary. You know, not to get all. Malcolm on you, but that's what we want to do. You know, like, and uh, if we're fortunate enough to have our quarterback, be great. You know, if not, I got a lot of confidence in our team, and I got a lot of confidence in everybody that's in his backup positions and his coaches coaching those guys.
going on, guys? Yeah, I think it's probably just, you know, trying to get a little bit more going, you know, in terms of how we can early ex execute on first and second down, being more efficient. If you looked at last week and really the Tampa game, just our early down execution and efficiency was not what you're looking for. We had too many third downs, um, just the efficiency specifically on P and 10. Right, and after an earned first down, we just were not very efficient in those windows, and that's going to le lead to a ton of get back on track reps and a ton of third downs. So I think it's really going back to our early down efficiency, which we had been really good against San Fran and a couple other games that we played, of just being a little bit more efficient and explosive if we can be in those early downs, specifically P and 10 and, and uh, the earned first downs. Mm -hmm. um, so can you kind of expand? You, you started talking about it yeah. here, but you know, those issues and how those get back on track. Yeah, if you looked at, like I mentioned last week, it, it was really our P and 10s, like our first and 10 uh, ops. We just weren't successful. Um, whether it be running it, throwing it, whatever it was, we were not efficient in that window, which then you're automatically so fast and to get back on track, go inefficient there, and now you're living in a third down long world that – Nobody really wants to live in. So um, I think it's just the early down execution, first and second down specifically, though. And then we get to third down, like Sean always talks about the defense, earning their ops on third down all right, to rush the passer. We need to earn our ops into more manageable windows on third down to be successful. Do you have to get into a get-back-on-track play? Um, what does that do to sort of uh, maybe limit the playbook of calls on the for sure, but you're trying to protect, you know, in terms of be smart with the play call, not put the guys in jeopardy in terms of the O-line or receivers. You're just trying to be smart with some of those play calls, protecting the quarterback. Um, can you run it more in some of those windows? Be a little bit more efficient throwing it with some of the quick game. Um, it definitely it play, all comes into play because you just don't want to put your guys in harm's way in those get back on track windows where you know you're going to end up probably dropping back again on third down so you don't go inefficient on first, drop back, drop back. That's not a you know a world that we really want to be living in. Go ahead, Kurt. Nope. Go ahead. Did you have any idea that Matthew was concussed during no. the game? No, I you know didn't get any you know sort of feeling from that. I mean, just such a competitor, you never really can tell with how some of those things work. I think you know. I mean, he's just. He's such a dog. He just does, you know, just competes. And I don't think he would probably let off even if he was. But so not really too sure in terms of that. But, you know, no. What's your level of concern moving forward? Yeah, just concern for the, for the person, right? You know, we, we talk about these situations that you – Think person first, player second with all these deals. And um, not as not concerned in terms of moving forward. Just for what happened, you feel, you know, you feel like we obviously uh, have to adjust to that. But you know, if he can be ready to go this week, great. And uh, you know, love to get him going, obviously. He's our, he's, he's our guy. So, but if not, we're, we're excited about John as well. What, what makes you excited about John Wolford in place of Matthew Stafford? You know, I think he's played. You know, you feel good about him playing and winning a game against the Arizona Cardinals, right? He showed that in 2020. And, um, you know, it, it's it's not something that you think uh, you excited over him. Obviously, if Matthew's ready and available, he'll be our quarterback. Uh, it's just a matter of, you know, we know we've played with John before. It gives you an element to be able to move his feet, you know, move the chains with his feet a little bit, does some, di you know, do some things. He's a competitor. He works at it, you know, and, and we're excited about it if it has to be that way. Not necessarily like we'd rather him play, obviously. Matthew's the guy, but gives you an opportunity to go win with a guy that you know has played and done it in this situation before. Is there any way that you guys would consider uh, using Bryce Perkins situationally or yeah. a lot? It just depends, you know, in terms of the actives, obviously. You know, I mean, we'll get him going, but do you want to, how much do you want to put guys in harm way in terms of when you're – if Matthew doesn't play, now you are only got two quarterbacks. How much do you want to do some of those things that end up putting those guys in harm's way? Not sure. And, and, and we're confident in John. You know, we're confident in John's ability to move, you know, move the chains, do some good things, lead our offense like he's done in the past. And, um, you know, not really too sure if that's something we're really looking to right now. Challenge has been and frustrating to get this offense going step away. 
college game to come back and try to get this right, but it's not yeah. working. How's that been for you? Um, it, it's a challenge, right? I mean, this this is especially, especially um, this season, it's, it's a challenge for sure. Um, frustrating, I don't know. You know, it's kind of our jobs in terms of this world, you know, uh, it's not always going to be perfect that you guys just came off of a Super Bowl, uh, had some successful years, and I think we can still get this thing going in the right direction. Um, we, it just needs to click. Right now, offensively, we all know it's not clicking right now. We need to get it to that point. But as a unit, as a team, to play complementary football, that's something we're still striving to do, and that's, that's a challenge. Um, frustrating at times, for sure. But um, the, the challenge is just getting us on the same page and trying to create some off, some efficiency, score some points. That's the only thing we're worrying about right now. Um, John, uh, when he started against uh, Seattle uh, mm-hmm. a couple of years ago, yep. um, didn't last, you know, he had to leave. It was kind of a scary situation. For sure. He had to leave in an ambulance. But when asking him about it this week, he said he wanted to make it clear to Sean and to you guys that he wants all plays on for the sure. table for him. For so sure. how do you kind of approach that, knowing you'll have two, only two guys up, yeah. you approach that, but then also knowing, um, you know, as Aaron said, time's right. kind of running out. Yeah. And, and I think for us, it's having a plan, obviously, for Matthew and John, right, in terms of what we're trying, you know, if Matthew's going to rock and roll, having some of those things, but also having some things for John that gives him the ability to be an athlete and do some of the things that, you know, take, take advantage of his skill sets, but also him just operating our offense and playing the position. I think we can just, if we can have him play, play quarterback, do what we need him to do to operate and, you know, win this football game, we can probably do those things without putting him in harm's way. Uh, and if Matthew's rolling, then it's our normal, you know, normal game plan. Talk about Don. Go ahead. As you guys have gone through the ups and downs this season, what have you learned about Sean as a coach? The consistency at which we approach every day. I mean, that's the one thing that when you are going through some adversity and when you're going through some issues uh, and struggling is the consistency that you approach every day with as a coach leads to our players. I mean, there's no disbelief, I feel, in that locker room on offense. Are we struggling? Have we been to our standards? No, absolutely not. But you walk out on the practice field, you're in the meeting rooms, you're not seeing guys uh, in the tank. You know, it's just coming back to work every day and, and, and trying to get it right. Um, and Sean's done a great job of leading that message and being consistent through some times of adversity. Talk about the lack of continuity and having it click. Yeah. When it comes to this week, and obviously if you put your finger on it, you would have, you know, this mm-hmm. would be the case. But is there anything different that you are doing, or the coaching staff, or players leading up to this one, when it comes to having it click better? Yeah, I think. Trying to take a little bit more of an approach for us is just letting the players go play. You know, we always want to be in the perfect play. That's a great thought to have, especially, you know, as a player, at least you know we're trying to put you in a position to be successful. And sometimes um, you can almost kind of handicap your guys to just not go let them play. Sometimes it's not going to be perfect. It might not be a clean seven, six box to go run the ball into. You know, it might not be man coverage for a play that we're hunting up. Well, just let the guys go play and adjust and have fun. So that's kind of been the mindset is, hey, maybe less trying to worry about the perfect play or, you know, these guys trying to do everything because they're so conscientious. They're such good dudes that they're always trying to do exactly what we're coaching them to do. Maybe less, a little bit less is more in terms of some of those details. Let these guys go play and let it rip. So you have the big hit Coleman and Kyron back. Mm-hmm. What impact can each of them have on the offense this week? Yeah, just the, another guy that communicates at an insane, you know, a, a really high level for us up front. A guy who's played a ton of snaps for us, good athlete in space, you know, in the screen game, pulling, things like that. Coleman's always been a good, you know, done a nice job with some of those things. And another guy that, uh, you know, obviously if not, God forbid anything happened to BA, now you feel a little bit more comfortable about some of the communication that can occur up front. And then Kyron, just excited to see what he can do. You know, it's obviously having see him get a ton of ops and uh, he's a guy that just does everything right in terms of as a rookie his preparation the way he practices the way he studies and uh you know just want to go see him play which would be fun to see kind of along the lines of that your earlier comment about like let, letting guys go play yeah. um not just the kind of the juice that you felt when you had guys running behind mm-hmm. you know a fullback in the eye and totally chronic, but also like EPA per play skyrocketed, yeah. the success rate of the play skyrocketed. Mm-hmm. Kind of, can you kind of take me through us through the balance yeah. of um, 
why that may be more difficult to repeat so frequently as right. the course of the season progresses and yeah. why you need to have things like that in your toolbox. You start to get a little auto, some auto checks, you know, to some of those things that ended up taking you out of, uh, out of some of that stuff. And um, at, the end of the, at the end of the day in the run game, we're trying to look at does it give us an advantage? Does it give us any advantage or in the play pass world, uh, does it give us an advantage? And um, some weeks, yes. Some weeks, no. Um, you know, in trying to just change the math in terms of some of the numbers that you can, you know, gain back when you do bring Ben back in the backfield and some of those things. Well, also, we have to be conscientious of not putting him in that situation too much. I mean, he can get physical in there. He's a great, great kid. He'll do everything we ask him to do. But we also have to uh, think about his longevity of the season. How much can we actually get some of those things done? Um, but it's a week to week thing for us, it's, but it's about, you know, does the box present something that we're looking to take advantage of when we do bring them back in the backfield? Um, what was it like to have Cam Akers back in the fold? And um, in regard to Stafford, is that something that you anticipate you're not going to know until Saturday, whether he's available or Sunday? Or yeah, I think, you know, I, I think that'll be up to Sean and the trainers and, and those guys. I'm not really too sure in terms of that process and when that decision gets made. I'm sure Sean will be able to, you know, shed a little bit light when he does does talk to you guys. And then uh, Cam, you know, it's just about continuing to get him going in practice, seeing, you know, his learning curve, like I mentioned going into last week, how much would he actually be able to show up and do for us. Got a couple reps and, and trying to get him more involved this week is definitely the plan. Appreciate it, guys. Oh, sorry. sorry. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I mean, he's, you know, yeah. not in a negative way. Yeah, yeah, for sure. How is he different than the, than the first time you got together with him in 2018? Because you're both very young, mm -hmm. very talking the football world. Now, you know, he's got a, he's got a wife, you've got a kid. How, right. how, how, does, how do things change? Yeah. Um, it's funny. I don't know if he, he's necessarily changed, but things definitely change as circumstances change, but the consistency at which we approach things really hasn't changed. But you look back to 2018, my first year here, and um, you're just kind of starstruck by the whole thing, right? And you get more involved in it, and you get to see the type of people that we work with and that we're around every single day. Um, it, it's weird. It doesn't really feel that much different, even though the circumstances, like you mentioned, are very different. Um, the success that we're having is a little bit different than when I first got here. Uh, the defenses in the NFL have changed you know, tremendously since then. Um, but I, I don't necessarily think it's a – that's a great question, but I'm not sure I feel a ton has changed. Uh, when you walk in here, you're in here every single day as a staff, with the players, with everybody. I don't feel much different. It's just, you know, the success, right? The efficiency at which we're operating on offense specifically uh, isn't what you know, we're striving for and hopefully get that thing going. Thanks, guys. Thank Appreciate it.